Alright, this is the uh, video about starting the rebuild of my CNC router as I told you I was going to do. Um, you can see this is the old one that I built several years ago and the bearings in it actually were not made to stand up to the abuse of a CNC router and it was really super light duty and stuff. Um, you can see I have the belt drives on there and it was all surplus parts I had laying around and I basically built it for nothing but the cost of a couple motor drives so you know it didn't cost me a lot and it did it was a good learning experience and you know it also I got probably about 500 hours of use out of it so I decided I was going to rebuild it and this actually is turning into more of a new build. I'm going to be scrounging parts I can off of this, especially all the electronics here that, you know, go into it. But um, I'm not sure that much of the mechanical is going to be any good for what I'm, I've decided to do. I've decided to go a little bit bigger on it and um, really heavy duty this time. So. I started taking the old one apart here and you know it looks like the motors will be reused they're servo drives but I'm not quite sure if they're going to be strong enough for the weight of the new gantry and stuff but at least the extrusions will be reused and um, you know these bearing blocks here that went they'll be tossed really uh, really not good for anything anymore so I started you can see I took everything apart and you know there was the old drive system for the moving the gantry and all the old electronics I um that's going to turn into a pain in the neck because I never drew a schematic of it so pretty much I've got to trace out each wire and figure out what it does now and at the same time I'm you know pulling it all apart and you can see you know basically with some of that 80-20 framework that I used all really light duty and these were some you know built in 80-20 guides and they've driven with timing belts you can see how they're synced together with that shaft there and I'm probably going to still use that to sync the gantry together on the new router but um, all the guides and stuff are going so really it was just a matter of taking everything apart and just trying to, to salvage what I can right now and you can even see that the uh, even the table was made out of some old scrap pieces of aluminum that I had laying around. So it was very light duty and, you know, a little bit rickety, but it was so light that it, um, it, it never really moved or anything. But the new one won't be quite that light. So, I, um, you know, it looks like these extrusions here, there, you can see the, how they put the rails in there with little aluminum inserts. And that was what guided the bearings. And they're just little V-groove bearing groove wheels and they were bearings and they just could not take the abuse. So, um, you know, it was a fun learning experience, but time to move on and get something a little bit better and um, heavier duty that I can get into more 3D work with. So, there are the old parts all, all taken apart and I did uh, order a piece of... 8020 tubing I'll show you in a while and then I was going to build a new frame for it but I looked on Craigslist and I actually found this frame here I bought for less than the cost of the tubing that for making a new frame and this here is all made out of quarter inch wall 2x2 two two tubing and it is definitely a professional job welding it up and stuff I could never have gotten a frame I could never have gotten a frame to come out this flat square and everything you know with all the welding on it but you know it's really wonderful frame and the only thing was it had some couple coats of paint on and i decided to just take some of those poly uh wheels from harbor freight the paint stripper wheels and use them on the grinder to remove the paint and you know it was all like brand new underneath and um you could see all the welds were really just perfect and there was no warpage or anything on this so i was just really amazed to you know get lucky and find something like this so I thought it would take me a half hour to strip down, but it turned out I uh, five hours later I was done. So you know I did a little bit at a time. I got the bottom done first and threw some primer on. I had some of this 1K primer from uh, my dollar store here. So I wound up using three cans of that and a couple of those poly abrasive wheels. And you know finally I had it all stripped down and primed and ready to move into the shop. Now this frame is well over 200 pounds, so you know it's not something easy to pick up and carry. 
and um, I decided to get the little tractor out to bring it around back and you know get it into my shop. Those forks on that uh, bucket are really they've been a, a great investment. I think I got them for like uh, less than $150 from Titan and um, I just use them all the time to save my back. But you can see how easy it makes just you know moving stuff like this around and this isn't really super heavy it's you know light for the forks but it's heavy for me anymore to pick up and move so i got that moved around back into my shop and got it to the door there and set it on a couple dollies and then rolled it inside and started painting it with the same paint that i used on the, um, the router table and the workbench and everything else this is the uh, the orange paint that I used them doing the frame up with. Now it's a Sherwood Williams latex paint, but it did do a good job covering after a couple of coats there. And it, you know, pretty much match everything else. And then I showed you the last video that I did buy some uh, mechanical parts from, these are some of those Chinese parts that I bought. And I found out that they, they look pretty good, but like uh, some of these aluminum blocks and stuff for the holding the um, the ball screw nuts just were not properly uh, machined and the threads on them just weren't really uh, threaded all the way in and some of them had garbage in it and stuff so I had to go through and you know clean up all the threads and I'll be just uh, surfacing off the faces too just to you know make everything nice when I'm done so I got that done and um, like I said I had ordered one piece of aluminum extrusion and then I got the um, everything set up on the frame with what I had so I could measure out the other extrusions and order them also. And I did uh, have a piece of three quarter inch plywood laying around that I made a bottom shelf for and put two coats of that uh, gray paint that I used on all my other tools and a couple of ribs on the bottom and a couple more coats of paint and you know I had a nice little shelf to fit in the bottom there. So trying to put it in there without damaging the paint, that's a, another thing because this paint takes a couple weeks to actually cure good. And you can see I put some mask and tape in the corners there to keep it from marking up the paint. But that actually turned to uh, be a little bit too thick and taking up too much room and making everything hard to, to get in place there. But once I, you know, once I got it in there and got the tape out of the way there, I was able to just shove it down and I did have a little paint touch up to do there but um you know it wasn't much and gives me a nice little shelf down there anyway to work with so I got that all all ready to go now and I'm just kind of waiting for some extrusions to come and in the meantime the first extrusion that I ordered showed up and this is that 8020 aluminum and it's uh, pretty much the aluminum that everybody uses for building these CNC routers. I decided to go with the uh, extra heavy wall 80 by 160 millimeter for the gantry and it's a thousand millimeter uh, well it's about 40 inches long for the thousand millimeter slides. So they do charge a couple dollars for shipping when you order this stuff. They charge you like three dollars to cut it to length, and then a couple, you know, it was like I think maybe about eighteen dollars shipping for this piece. It's like forty pounds though, but you can see the packaging that they did. They really packaged it up good. They wrapped it in paper and they uh, made a special box for it. So you know, I was real happy that they protected it good. And then I decided to just check the flatness and straightness of it. And you can see there's a um, my straight edge, and that's pretty much dead straight from what I'm, you know, from what I'm seeing. And I have the thinnest feeler gauge that I have there, and I cannot get it under any location along there. So this uh, extrusion is just about perfectly flat. I just cannot believe it. And then the same thing in the other direction. I decided to check it over. And I guess that's why everybody uses this material because it does give you a really good straight, flat, and strong foundation to work off of. Now there you can see that's a, my thinnest feeler gauge, it's a 0 .0015 and that would not fit under it. And I decided I'm going to be, you know, mounting the, the blocks for the, uh, on, on this for the uh, spindle. 
and I decided to get these to start unpacking all these uh, Chinese guides that I bought and getting ready to mount them there in the uh, in the grooves you can see how they'll mount with T nuts and first thing I did after unpacking them is I put a straight edge on them and definitely there's a little bit of warpage in there so I'm going to have to pull them straight um, and usually you have a machined edge to bank these up against so you can clamp them in place and screw them down tight to, to solve that but uh, with this I'm just going to have to make some kind of a spacer and straighten everything out and clamp it together as I tighten the T-nuts. Then I decided to put the bearing blocks on there and you can see the first ones went on perfect and the second ones I could barely get the oil the grease seal over the thing and I just can't get the block on the rail. It's like it just won't fit. Um, I figured well maybe the, the blocks got something wrong with it and tried the next one and same thing you can see you can barely get the grease seal you really had to stretch it as far as it would go and the rail it just won't start on the rail there and the other two are perfect over there and I figured I'd try these blocks on there and it turned out that they they fit perfect uh, you know like zero play and really nice movement on that one so it looks like there's a serious problem with that rail and um, you know, I got out my caliper here and decided to measure it. And it, they're supposed to be 20 millimeters wide. And it turns out that that one, the good rail, is a little bit under 20 millimeters. And this one is about a half inch over 20 millimeters wide. So somehow they completely screwed up this rail when they ground it. And they made it a half millimeter too wide. So there's no way that it's ever going to be usable. So I did, um, you know, I sent these pictures and stuff to the, the seller on Amazon. I contacted them, and I'm kind of waiting to see what they do. They said they're going to get back with the manufacturer and, you know, see what they have to send out. So I'm waiting to see, you know, how long it takes for that to happen. So that put me at a complete standstill, and I decided to go back and check everything else. And all the rest of them were perfect, so I don't know how that one... That one rail got through their quality, but it did. And we'll see how, you know, how quick they take care of it. Hopefully fairly fast so I can get going here and, you know, do some more of the videos. So pretty much it started out as I was going to do a rebuild of the, the old table and scrounge parts and stuff. But it turned out it's going to be a much bigger, stronger, heavier duty table now. So, you know, it's going to involve a lot more parts and um, a lot more machining time. But I just figured I'd give you a update on where I am now. And um, like I said, once I get the, the slide straightened out and the, um, the other rails, the other 80-20 rails, I'll do an update on that. But you can see so far in this build, I've had some really great luck finding a frame that's, you know, that nice. And I've had some really bad luck with the rails. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.